Hello CS25. In this video, this is Unit 12 lecture. I'm going to go over troubleshooting systems and um, we will take a look at different type of systems and how to go about troubleshooting them from PC to Linux. So in Chapter 8, it begins with talking about uh, slow system performance and how to overcome that. So on the Windows side, some of the causes in slow performance would be that um, page file or temporary file is full or badly fragmented. Overheating CPU can also reduce the speed. Um, running slow because it's low on memory. Sudden performance drop could be virus or malware. Registry error messages um, that can be fixed by running cleaner for the registry and also undiagnosed performance issues that could be related to the OS itself. So the three steps in what we would perform to improve the performance for our PC, we would remove unneeded startup programs and we touch on this in several labs where we would look at the startup programs and redo and remove them. We can install more RAM to be able to support the application needs. And so you can take a look at the maximum capability on the motherboard and also on the OSI. So we would disable also unnecessary services and you can do this going through your, um, your system your system services by searching on the search bar, or you can go through control panel to take a look at those. So services tool is really important. You can take a look at system information and system information services to be able to check. Also task manager is a useful one. We did this for the lab. On the Linux side, um, simply the same. We reduce the startup programs, install more RAM, disable the system services. On the Mac OS, the recommended steps would be better performed, would be try to um, replace hard disk with SSD, add more RAM, use this utility to remove apps that you don't need, use system preferences to disable unneeded startup apps, uh, be sure to install Mac OS updates when it become available and remove unwanted dashboard programs or widgets and that will optimize the performance on the Mac OS. Now when we look at Windows 7 sometime you would see that it's not fully connecting to internet because there's limited connection you would, it would show in the yellow exclamation point. On Windows 8, um, it does, we can troubleshoot that by using Internet Troubleshooter. On Windows 7, we would use Network Sharing Center and click on the red X and be able to use the Internet Troubleshooter. So they both have Internet Troubleshooter. It's just that on Windows 8, you're able to search for it. On Windows 7, you have to go through Network Sharing Center or Control Panel and go to Networks. On Windows 10, you simply click on the network icon on the taskbar to be able to look at your network status and then click the troubleshoot button. So they are slightly different in the interface, but you still be able to get to the troubleshooting um, wizard as you look at those steps. So in sometimes the internet connection can be device related. Sometimes it could be ISP related. Um, and so normally we would restart our system after we try to troubleshoot or solve the problem. And sometimes that would require you to restart the router in the case where if your router is flooded or it's able, not able to connect or obtain connection from your service provider. Now, when the system is failed to boot, that could be there might be a corrupted boot sector or incorrect boot configuration in BIOS or missing driver files. So Windows boot errors would be shown in the case where if you have the wrong 
uh, a not recognizable boot sector. It would use the boot MGR, the boot manager, and the BCD files during the start boot up process. So if any of these files are corrupted, you would get an error message. Boot manager is missing. Now to replace it, you can restart the system and we would use the installation disk or USB in order to replace the boot manager and replace the file. So what it will do is it will rewrite the boot partition and replace the damaged file with the appropriate file. And so to repair the BCD on the notes, it provided you with the page, the steps here. We can also go through system recovery options and we can do startup repair options. Then we would boot the system recovery options and select command prompt. We can type boot rec slash rebuild BDC. This will allow us to rebuild the BDC. And we would need to export the backup BDC from our installation disk. On the Linux boot error, you can use the shift key while the system start and this will load grub which is a bootloader and it would allow you to select the rescue or recovery for the minimal version of the os such as ubuntu if you select advanced you can select the recovery option depending on the distros of the linux but if we're looking at ubuntu we can choose the recovery menu option such as Resume clean uh, EPKG, which is repair broken software, failsafe X, and so on. <clears throat> now, to fix the problem, start the system with live CD or live USB and use the command sudo fdis-devsda to view the partition table. So you want to view the partition table that's running and we can use the print command or p command. The bootable partition would be marked as active and so no other partition would be marked as active. So then we would use the a command to mark the partition as active and save the changes. So in the case that if your partition is not mar marked active, it would not be able to load and then you would remove the live CD and boot it normally. On Mac OS, uh, Boot Camp would then be used for the multi-boot to support Windows in the case if you want to adapt Windows with Mac OS. That's what the old processor, Intel current processor, is not there yet. Um, for malware infections, some of the symptoms could be that you would have pop-ups, browser redirection, security alerts, slow performance, internet connectivity issues, um, halt of the system, update failures, application crashes, and so on. So the list go on here with the security issues and other issues also on page four some of the common solutions and issues, application crashes, then that would you would need to kill the task, add more RAM, clean our system for airflow, reboot, um, apply application updates, rollback updates, blue screen of death, your BSOD, that might be software conflict or corrupted OS files. So we would want to safely go into safe mode, check hardware, re-image or reload the OS. Print, printing issues, check connections, clear print queue, reboot printer, and reprint. For slow boot up, we would check the boot order, scan for malware, disable delay startup applications. If your services fail to start, we can go look at the type of services and restart it. And if it doesn't start again, then we will be able to check how that service is tied to the applications and then we would then fix it from the application side slow profile load that would be caused by registry 
be careful when you edit your registry so edit your registry or in the case where you have corrupted profiles such as drives and so on then we want to be able to reinstall the profile or re modify the registry there So the best, best practices for malware removal is listed on page five. We want to use the software tool to identify the type of malware, quarantine the infected, do not delete the file because it's tied to your system file and that will cause issues. Disable your system restore because you might want, don't, you don't want to infect your restore point as well. Update anti-malware and scan. So in the first few questions, we can answer this. Number one, Hilda notices that her computer system performance suddenly decreases. How do you help Hilda troubleshoot her system? We would then look for scan malware. We would scan the malware, review processes in task manager, look for um, unresponding tasks or processes, and then be able to Follow the breadcrumb for those processes to be able to check out what type of services is tied to those processes and disable those type of services. For number two, how can you improve performance on a Linux system? We would remove unnecessary startup programs, disable system services that's not needed, or we can install additional RAM. For number three, how do you troubleshoot Windows PC Boot Manager's missing error? We can use system restore options, select startup repair, or use command prompt. In command prompt, we can type boot rec slash rebuild BDC. If you're using boot rec exe, if it's not found, then we can recreate it by using BDC edit slash export C BDC backup. Or, and then we would do ren C boot BDC. Now, BCD, if it's the old one, we can rebuild it using the boot rec command. When you troubleshoot your Linux PC that has boot issue, how do, would you do that? You would hold down the shift key at the boot and you would select the rescue or the recovery in grub, which is your bootloader. For number five, how do you fix the following problem in Windows PC? Slow to boot. We would check the boot order, disable the startup services, and scan for malware. B, slow to load files. We would edit our registry cautiously. C, application crashes. We would kill tasks, add RAM, clean airflow vents, reboot, apply application updates, rollback or rollback updates if the problem starts after the last update. Number six, it asks you to identify the anti-malware tools for Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. For Windows, you can go to various websites to be able to do that. You can use AVG, you can use Malware Bytes, you can use others. Um, I personally use Avira. Um, so you can select the type of even free or low-cost tools to be able to have an, a good anti-malware system that's installed. For Linux, you can use Clam AV or Komodo, Mac OS. Um, I know most of this, the anti-malware company produce for Mac OS also. You can use like Avast, Avira, and so on. So they are also cross-platform on some of these. Number seven, it asks you, why should you clear cache data or on an app this will help the performance and the stability of the app so in the next part of the notes it talks about how you would be able to um, improve your application performance also updating your ios app you can use app store icon and do the update for the iOS on the Android app, you can go to menu settings and then auto update settings, or you can go to Google Play itself for the individual app for update. 
we can uninstall and reinstall the apps so to solve the problem of the corrupted or outdated apps you can uninstall an app and here it lists for android ios and windows mobile on the android we would go to settings device applications application manager and you can choose the app and click uninstall on the ios you would go to the home screen hold down the app icon until the app is wiggle and then we can tap the x to remove the app and to reinstall we would use apple store to be able to download and reinstall for the app soft reset is simply a soft restart it restarts the android device and help fix the problems on the or it would reset the smartphones or the mobile device or its app without deleting the data. Depending on the devices, you would use one or more of the methods. We can press and hold down the power button for the, the reset. We can turn the device back on by hold down the power button until it restart. After about a couple minutes, um, you can also turn off the device and reinstall remove the battery if it's possible and then also restart the device but i think most of your devices now uh, you're unable to remove the battery you can press and hold the power button on the and the volume down simultaneously until the device restarts so depending on the type of device you can do a soft reset so on um on the next page, it talks about the hard reset, and hard reset does erase the content and settings. And so that will put it back to the manufacturing. And so hard reset on Android. So usually it asks you for the backup of the device. And if we, we want to try to do a soft reset first, and so if that's not able to fix the problem then we can do the hard reset but make sure that we back up the things that we would need um, and it walks you through the step on how to do that on samsung galaxy on android device and ios so for the next question number eight asks you to define the soft reset that will be a reboot or a restart of the system without deleting the user data and on a mobile device in the next section that talks about how you can improve your mobile device so in our notes it talks about how we can improve your connection so in the case of signal drop we would refer to the bar so if so your connection is line to sight so if you are in the area where you don't get cell signal or there's not a repeater you would then see that your signal strength is less so in the here what we can do is we can look at how we can use the speed test like google Up speed test from google play or from the app store and we can test the performance of our cellular and wi-fi connections in the case that if you're using wireless connections, if you are not receiving full wireless connections, you can consider using a repeater with your home router. When you have power drain that is caused by display being utilized the power or apps running simultaneously at the same time that drains your power. So we can configure the screens to be dimmer. We can close out the apps that we don't need and we would be able to save more power. Um, in the case where if you're in the low cell range or low signal range for network connection, you can put the device on airplane mode to reduce power drain. Slow data speed can be caused by a few things. No connection to cellular network, weak cellular data signal, unlimited data plan, and, the, and you would, might have a cap based on the billing period and so on. Unattended Wi-Fi connections, uh, unintended Wi-Fi connections where it would connect to the public network or hotspots. And we can disable this feature to avoid any kind of security risk. We can turn off the Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi connections 
to the wireless network. To prevent data leak in files, um, we can enable encryption. We can lock and wipe the device in case that it's lost. We would avoid attaching ourselves to the wireless public network. We would use VPN for secure connections over Wi-Fi and we would disable Wi-Fi tethering or connecting to other devices to share data. Data transmission over the limit sometimes can cost, um, can be costly and also can reduce your data transfer rate. So we want to take a look at the data usage and we can configure our system to not use the data plan as much using the provided set. Unauthorized account access, root access, and so on. We want to be able to protect our systems by not using um, iOS device at the root level or Linux device at the root level. We want to not be able to uh, click links and provide financial information to unknown source. And then for the apps, we want to take a look at the app permissions to be able to control the consent for the app that's running um, from either the user mode or the developer mode. So in the case where if the, o the iOS is jailbroken or the Android devices is rooted, the information can be in much higher risk in the case of normally functioning device. We can also disable location tracking um, and also disable the GPS options on the mobile devices. So that way malicious app cannot perform unauthorized location tracking or the app is not legitimate. It would then be purchased and for the from the Play Store. When mobile devices have high utilization of resources, that could be cellular data, CPU, memory storage, and that can cause the system to be slow. Um, you can turn off background updates, real-time usage on iOS, and download the, the, the information from your Apple developer website for instrumental apps, and you can learn more about on how that can be applied to your iOS. Use anti-malware on Android and iOS devices like Kapersky Lab, Norton, McAfee, Bitdefender, Avira, eSets, and so on to be able to protect your data on your mobile device. You can also use App Scanner to monitor the permissions and the use of the apps. And before you install the apps, make sure that you review the required permissions for that app, usually for microphone cameras, um, contact lists, and so on. In the case where you need to do factory reset, install before retiring the device and eliminates the apps um, to prevent privacy from being exposed. And also you can perform factory reset on the device. So the clean install on the desired app, if desired, it, then the device would then be encrypted and you can set up the pin for automatically encrypt the device. So for the Android, you can do backup of my data, automatically restore and enable. Then you can go to settings, backup resets, and factory reset. Um, now in order to do fully backup, you would then have to sync with some type of systems or the cloud. So we would do a backup before we would do a reset. How do you improve the wireless security on your mobile device? You would disconnect from unknown networks and public networks. You would disable the Bluetooth when it's not in use. In the next question, um, how, uh, question nine, how can you reduce the power drain on the mobile device? We talked about disable unused service apps, disable unsuccessful connection or use airplane mode. For 11, how can you better protect data on the mobile devices? We would use encryption, VPN connection, avoid public Wi-Fi connection, tethering, 
Question 12, how can you prevent unauthorized access of camera, microphone access, and mobile device? We would, strict, we would restrict access for camera and microphone apps, review permissions for access when installing the apps. So in chapter eight, it talks about troubleshooting PCs, Linux, iOS, and mobile devices, and ways to do resets, um, checking permissions and securing your devices. And this concludes my lecture for Chapter 8, which is Unit 12 and CIS 25. And we have gone over the questions for the assignments. Thank you for watching the video.